Before we start today, I want to thank our wonderful sponsor who makes this day possible for all of us to be here. So Broadcom Foundation has allowed us to welcome all of you to this wonderful event. And to help us start the day, I'd like to introduce a great friend from Broadcom, Netta, and she's going to come up and share some of her own passion and enthusiasm for everything that we're doing and everything that she's doing in her life. Let's hear it for Netta. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Netta, and I'm an engineer with Broadcom. And I want to tell you guys a little bit about how I became an engineer and um, a little bit of information about what engineering actually is, at least to me. So a little bit of background. I grew up here in Cupertino, and my dad is an engineer, my grandpa's an engineer, and my grandma's an engineer. But despite all of that, I had no idea what engineers did. They go to work, and they come back. But I didn't know what they did in between. So I figured, you know, you must be born an engineer. And I thought, I'm not an engineer. I don't, you know, take apart the toaster and try to put it back together. That was never really something I did as a child. So when I went to college, I decided I was going to study anything but engineering. So I took political science and history and anthropology, and I tried all these different classes, and nothing really clicked. Nothing was really something I was passionate about. So finally, I said, okay, I tried an electrical engineering class, and I loved it. It made sense to me, and I said, this is what I want to study. This is something I really like, and it's logical, and I love it. Now, why was I able to choose engineering? Luckily, I always took math and science classes. So when the time came, I had all the options open to me. So no matter what you think that you want to study, don't close any doors. So always take math classes and science classes and never say, I'm bad at math. There's no such thing as I'm bad at math. Math is huge. There are so many different classes. I loved algebra. I still love algebra. I hated geometry. Didn't like it. Didn't make sense to me. So that's OK. You might have to ask more questions. And chances are, if you have a question, Half the people in the room have the same question, and no one else is brave enough to ask it. So if you don't understand something in a math or science class, ask questions. Go on YouTube, watch a video, talk to your parents, talk to someone else's parents. You're in an area where there are so many people who are really good at math and science who can help you. But never say, I'm bad at math, I'm bad at science, and stop taking classes, because you know what will happen? is you'll be closing doors to yourself. And then you won't have all these other options. When you get to college and you say, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a scientist, I want to be an engineer, you will have closed certain doors. So the most important thing is you are good at math and you are good at science and you can keep doing it. And even if something's a little bit hard or a little bit challenging, you just might have to work a little bit harder. So luckily, I always took math and science classes. And when I decided to be an engineer, it wasn't a problem. So I took my electrical engineering classes. I liked some, didn't like other classes. At the end, everything made sense. I finished, and I got my degree. And I still thought, you know, I don't really know if I want to be an engineer. Engineers, they go to work. They sit in their cubicle by themselves. They type. They leave. You don't get to talk to anybody. That doesn't really sound like me. But I'll try it. So I went, and I got an internship at Broadcom. And you know what I found out? Let me tell you about engineering. Here's what no one tells you. We had a sand volleyball court, and every Friday in the middle of the day, we would go out in the sun, in, the sh in our shorts, and we'd play volleyball. And we had a basketball court and a tennis court. We had a pool table, and we had pool tournaments. And we had triathlons, and we did races together. And you know what? If you guys have Facebook, or your friends have Facebook, you go to Facebook, and every break area, it's like a supermarket. There's every kind of snack and candy and drink and yogurt and s snack you could ever think of, and it's free. You just go and you take whatever you want. And the food is amazing. So engineers get all these amazing perks that all my friends who became lawyers and doctors and everything else, when I tell them about it, they say, do you even work? <laughs> so, so let me tell you a little bit about the work. What is it that engineers do? Engineers think of problems, and then they find solutions. And you're not just sitting by yourself. Sometimes, you know, if you're in the middle of something, you might work a little bit by yourself, which is okay. But a lot of times, you sit with other people and you say, let's think about this. What's a problem? 
okay, here's the problem we want to try to address. Let's try to solve it. Let's think of different creative solutions and we'll, we'll try to think of a design. We'll try to think, how are we going to fix this? And then you get to design it and you get to build it and you get to see it work, which is exactly what you guys are going to do today. So today you guys are going to be engineers and you're going to run into a problem and you guys are going to design a solution and you're going to see it work. So again, no matter what you decide to do, just make sure that you keep all the doors open. So keep doing math and keep doing science. And if something is challenging, that doesn't mean you're not good at it. It just means you need to work a little bit harder, but you will get it and you can be really, really good at it. So I hope you guys enjoy being engineers today. And hopefully in 10 years, I'll see you on the volleyball court. Thank you.